good day everyone. Today I am going to answer the questions given to us by Dr. Arnold Paramos in the course Philosophy of History. So first, what do we mean by history? According to Aristotle, it is a systematic accounting of a set of natural phenomena that is taking into consideration the chronological arrangement of the account, meaning there is a series of events in the history happened in the past. This explains that knowledge is derived through conducting a process of scientific investigation of past events. We need to say there is a systematized process to be considered when we are having the historical study. So, of course, it came from Greek word historia, which means learning by inquiry. So, that's basically history. It is usually accounts for phenomena, especially of chronological event chronological order of events. And there are theories in investigating history. We have factual history and speculative history. So what's the difference between these two? But before that, I have learned, according to Dr. Arnold Faramas, given material that how historians study the past are the following. First, historians often ask questions. Questions about the past in order to understand the present. So of course, in inquiry, we need to ask relevant questions. Next step, historians use a variety of methods and approaches to help them answer questions about what happened in the past. Meaning to say there are various methodologies in asking for that questions, in conducting research, historical research. And lastly, I also learned that historians examine evidence, authentic or replicated, and draw conclusions they answer historical questions. So basically, there is a evidence that needs to address the questions. Now, theories in investigating history are first factual history and speculative history according to a book entitled Readings in Philippine History. Okay, So it stated that theories in investigating history are first factual, meaning to say it presents readers a plain and basic information only. The events took place what, the when, the events happened, as well as the who the characters or the people in a certain event. That's basically facts, purely history, the who, the what, and the when. But when we are going to try to dig deeper about that event, goes beyond facts concerned with the reason why the event happened, the why and how, and tries to speculate on the cause and effect of an event, is we try to investigate the speculative history, digging deeper of that certain event. Okay, now, what is the philosophy of history? It is concerned with the concepts, methods, and theories used in studying history. So, of course, the question of given. First, what does history consist of individual actions, social structures, periods, and regions, civilizations, co large causal processes, as well as divine intervention? It's basically the incompleteness of records as limited man's knowledge of history. Purely, the historians are going to to discover, research, inquire questions about a specific event, and of course, that they can conclude based from the limited sources of knowledge or basically evidence. So, of course, in order to have a holistic understanding of history, they should have individual actions, the, the, the complete cause or the complete source of evidence. So, of course, the historians will try to understand civilizations, the social structures, periods, as well as divine intervention in order to have a historical knowledge, in order to produce or conclude a certain historical event. Now, the historian's aim is also very similitude, which means they need to arrive to get the truth, the authenticity, as well as the plausibility of the event happened in the past. So basically, having this history consists of individual actions, large causal processes, divine intervention, they aim to have the very similitude. Next, does history as a whole have meaning, structure, or direction beyond the individual events and actions that make it up? From the evidence, historians strive to restore the total past of mankind. History as a whole of meaning beyond the individual events or actions that make it up. History becomes only the part of a human past which can be meaningfully reconstructed from the available records and inferences regarding their setting. Of course, the historians will try to gather as much as possible the authentic data and the individual actions and events. Those individual actions, if could be compiled and with the conduct with the result of the different 
series of historical writings and authentic evidences, of course, the historians could come up a very reliable source of information. So yes, they, they could have a whole meaning if those individual actions will come up. Those product of research and as well as authentic historiography and historical research. Now, what is involved in our knowing, representing, and explaining history? Of course, first of all, the historian's aim is to achieve a very similitude, the truth, authentic, and plausible about the past. So, of course, this includes historiography, writing about history, as well as gathering data or historical data, having also historical method, the different steps, methodologies in arriving or searching for the historical knowledge. Of course, how they are going to conclude to have a method, of course, they need to have a source, a source, source of evidence. And it comes into two, the primary source as well as the secondary source. Also, they are going to analyze the historical data that gathered and having the historical criticism to see if what they get, what they got as well as the research are authentic, plausible, and true. Now, we have historical method, the process of critically examining and analyzing the methods or survivals of the past, records of the past. Basically, it's the method, the step-by-step -step process of the past. Historiography, the imaginative reconstruction of the past from the data derived by that process. Many to say it's writing about the historicity, about the historical event. And historicity, the history is the investigation of the past. Now, what is the steps in historical analysis? First, is select the subject to investigate, collect probable sources of information on the subject, examine the sources of genuineness, the truth, the authentic as part, in part of, in whole, and extract credible particulars from the sources or parts of sources. Of course, we need to, historians gather evidence as authentic one, the reliable source, and they extract that source from, they see that source from the very most credible part to explain that specific historical event and evidence we have basically there's a process process they select analyze organize eventually they write and they gathered evidence so history is an account of the past according to this model and sources of historical data of course it could be relics remains artifacts testimonies of events happened to the past like for instance the world war it could be a good source of reference or source could be the the witness of the event the veterans and historical sources are materials from which the materials construct meaning so that's the historical source example from the philippine history from the national culture museum we have the laguna copper plate inscription so it is a tablet um, with the by buying as a copper inscribed it is it tells a deep of the past utang so basically they're existing na utang ng unang panahon tracing history and we have of course the manunggal jar as part of the relics or artifacts of the philippine history this could be a good source of information specifically some of the author or historical authors i've said um research that they conclude that the, the people before Anitos are be believed to have the life after that, hereafter. So basically, it's a boat and it is a jar putting the bones of the specific person died. Now, we have also testimonies of witnesses. This could be one good source of historical data. So they could be the speech, commentaries, or other people who witnessed this certain historical event. And we have the written sources of history, written and unwritten. First, written, it could be classified as narrative or literature, diplomatic or juridical, the laws, as well as the social documents. This could be refers to the birth certificates and other literature writings, gathering history. And we have also another source of history, which is the non-written. Non-written comes into two forms, the material evidence or archaeological evidence, as well as the oral evidence. Material evidence or archaeological evidence refers to the things that were presented before in the past so example here the burial cloth the death blanket so it is a bantun uh, ikat known as ikat it is a cloth that is basically from the past that concluded um used to be a wrap for the deceased person so basically long time ago other sources stated that burial happened long time ago because of this one and of course, we have the mysterious astrolabi of San Diego. One of the ship, San Diego, sank on December 10, 1600s. And basically, 
it was found out the shipwreck found there are different artifacts and this astrolabe could be found as one of the two existing astrolabes in the world so of course this ikat also is believed to be the oldest cloth in the philippines as well as in the southeast asia possibly then we have the primary sources secondary sources primary source are the first and original first and experience meaning to say it could be a statement the quotation the books the movies the pictures those refers to the primary sources of evident or historical knowledge and we have also secondary source these are the second hand source of information materials made by people long after the events being described example the interpretation or the books written about that particular historical event it could be a a a magazine or newspapers writing about the specific historical event so it's a second-hand experience or second-hand source of information and of course when we are gathering historians gathering data they know they need to criticize if that historical evidence are true so historical criticism must be done and they need to test the authenticity whether the material are correct reliable or true okay so external criticism and internal criticism comes so we have the where was the document written why did it survive and who was the real author like for instance the rhythm of dr serizal it could be one source of external criticism and internal criticism i witness or second hand why what is written literal meaning example if the no limitary contains a word globalization of course if we try to scrutinize globalization did not exist in during spanish word it's now so of course basically it's unreliable so of course after the structure of the book itself, no limit ang rin is filibusterismo, the content of the book itself will be scrutinized. That's the internal criticism. The external criticism, the structure of the book. The internal is the content of the book. And we have example. One past but many histories. Controversies and conflicting views in Philippine history according to a book of Ligan at actually 18 readings in Philippine history. So accordingly, they, they stated a quarrel or conflict between these two events when did the cry of Balintawak happen? According to Katipunan General Guillermo Masangkay he was an eyewitness of the historic event and a childhood friend of Bonifacio and according to him the first rally of the Philippine Revolution happened on August 26, 1896 at Balintawak and of course in contrast according also to Gregoria de Jesus which who was the wife of Andres Bonifacio, a keeper of the secret document of Katipunan. She also, the keeper of the secret document of the Katipunan, she also stated that the first cry happened near Kalaokan on August 25, 1896. So what's the truth? Okay, so that's one of the major nice historical event that could be touched in the history. And... To what extent is human history constituted of the constitutive of the human present? So according to George Santayana, those who don't learn history are doomed to repeat it. Basically, if we try to analyze history, it could give us lesson. Like for instance, the world wars, the major world wars in history. It bring destruction, massive death, poverty, or even hunger. If we try to learn from the past, it could prevent another future wars in the future. We will learn from the past if we try to have a good future, a brighter future. So if we try to learn history, we will learn something. We will learn, we will have a brighter future if we try to avoid those mistakes of the past. And accordingly, the material given from Dr. Arnold Faramos, I have also learned that to know more about the roots of our culture is history. Because of history, we will learn about the mistakes of the past. Because of our history, we try to look at the trends that repeat through history. And we learn about different factors that shape society. And God bless!